Not yet. We can't do it yet. We're nowhere near start or finished yet, so you got to wait. Go on. I'll call you when I need you. Right, muckers. So this week we're going to look at the brakes on the Massey 165, and they are uh, inboard dry type brakes. Now we saw the ones on the Major in the last video, and they're just the normal, you know, brake uh, shoes with the drum on, and they're outboard, so you can get to them easily. The Massey ones are right inside the axle, and as I said, they are the earlier type, which are the dry brakes, meaning that they they're not immersed in oil or anything like that, or they shouldn't be. So, also. Towards the end of this video, keep watching because we will announce who has won the Case Puma model, the old uh, 240 CVX. So, without further ado, roll the titles. <laughs> So, I know a lot of people went... Really? Yeah? I know a lot of people, you hear the term... You hear people talking about wet brakes, dry brakes, inboard, outboard brakes, this, that and the other. We all kind of sort of know what you're on about. Um, but do we? Really? Is this one of those, well it's got wet brakes. Oh, okay. That one's got... Oh, okay. Unless you're splitting these things down, you never really get to see them. So, with the 165, uh, the old Fud Weasel said he will very kindly um, let us film what's happening. Um, two reasons, so we can show you the axle as you break it down into the components to get to the brakes. And secondly, because he just wants somebody here with him. He gets so lonely. Just to let everybody know, these had a nut on the other side, and oh, I say they had a nut. Um, there's a remnant on here somewhere, is it? Oh, there is, yeah. So, um, they all were completely rusted as one with the end of the bolt. Every single one. So they had to be um, split. Everyone had to be split off. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. So anyway, he's managed to do that, get them all out, split the nuts off. So this section here, Massey very kindly put a little slot in there for you to get your thing, tool, it's a thing, tool. There we go. You just take the weight off that. This is just the final drive here. Oh, there's a little bit oh, all the That surprises me. Does it? Yeah, I wasn't expecting there to be any oil in that at all. It actually looks quite clean as well, come to that. Yeah, considering it's 50 odd years old. As are you. <laughs> okay. This is the final reduction gear set on the... This was right up until the 300 series I used these. Right. This, so the half shelf drives these. Yes. These turn against that. Yes. And in turn they this is fitted onto the short stub shaft here and that drives that so you've basically got a reduction that's a, a, a reduction set yeah. yeah so that way you can obviously transfer um a lot more of the, the torque and whatever it, it multiplies the torque yeah effectively so you can see i mean here's a bearing and that actually feels actually feels fairly good yeah. it's got that lovely pungent gear oil aroma oh no we're lucky I was a bit worried that because that half shaft had started coming, coming out, out with it, it was uh, it had pulled out far enough to allow the brakes to drop off. Okay. Which we don't really want to do. Okay. Although we're going to take them apart anyway, so it's not. But if you were just doing this end, yeah, you wouldn't want that because you then got to go further to do. But as we're going that far, it was yeah. not an issue to us, but it would be. Yeah. Okay. Now, now if you can just see in here, there's. Ooh. Possibly dinosaur? No, anyway, yeah. there is some spaff in there, and it obviously, you, look, the age of this, the amount of work it's done, whatever, you know, people say, oh, there's some filings and that in there. Well, well what do you think, you know? So nobody has had this apart in all that time. No. 
And I doubt if anyone has even checked this oil in that time. No. Not since it was new. No. So, um, yeah, I'm not, not that worried about it. And it doesn't, it's not terrible. It's not like great chunks laying in there. No. You know, a little bit of um, fairy dust if we is also good. Out, a bit late now, but I'll look on that, but I can't see any really obvious wear. No. Um, un on uneven there. wear on the, on the gear teeth. No. So, okay. I think, and then, so then this bit also will come off, but I'm not... Not worried about getting that off now. Let's, no let's point really at this point. We can take no. this as a unit, I think. The only other thing which I really bore people with yeah. is that these come in two widths. The narrow ones, which is actually not a lot narrow, you can't really tell from outside. And we have two pinions on the epicyclic, and they chatter like anything when you're driving, so they, they went to a three pinion design. And that's right. right. So, what we're going to do now, we've got the diff lock. You just off. blocked everything with your orange. Always wear those orange overalls because I do a bit of work on railways as well. On oh, what? On railways. Oh, really? That explains everything. Oh my! Oh! 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 oh no! It's a PL2 too! Oh! Oh! The SNC 52! Oh my God! Oh! Right. So okay, we've so got the. Um, Trumpets here, yeah. not spunk trumpets. No, nope. no, nope. these are just you. Axle, <laughs> axle trumpets. Um, right, diff lock. So, diff. That's sticking back onto the yeah. driver's platform. So you can jam your feet on that, yeah. and that in turn pushes that. That down, yeah, and that in turn slots goes in, in between that slot there. there, yeah. And just slides, we'll see it in a minute, but it pushes slides. it over. Yeah. So that's when you feel the diff lock. You may, I don't know, those of you who have driven older tractors will remember, you used to feel it, and you'd almost feel it slide and pull yeah. once it was locking in, and that's what it's doing. Yeah. And then, then it'd stay in, and you couldn't turn at the headland. Yeah. So you'd have to keep jamming about and jack backing up. And but this, when you put your foot on the clutch and you disconnect drive, this diff lock should would come ping out. out. Yes. Yeah. Should. Okay. Right, just have a quick look. What have we got the chance? What have we got in here? Just have a quick look here, look. So, yeah, oh look, all the spaff. Yeah. So, but that's your main... Um, that is the, yeah. Your main drive through, yeah. yeah. And down at the bottom, yes, you can see there's the hydraulic pump, which is the Scots type of piston pump. Okay. So it's a double yoke piston pump. Um, yeah. There is the uh, uh, suction filter down there, a little gauze suction filter. Along the bottom, that's the PTO shaft. In there, and you no. can just see what it's. I know it's a bit of a different setup and whatever, but for those of you that watched the video when we did the Fordson uh, Major, um, I mean, that was they're just so much bigger. Yeah, the Majors are so much bigger, they are very well built, these old Fordsons. Just because they're not as beefy as such doesn't mean that they didn't advance. You didn't need all that, did you? They yeah. did it through technology, didn't they? There was a, a, Even, you know. I mean, considering there's only, what, five, what was that major, 50? 50, 52. 50, oh, okay, there's about 12, there's about 14 years between the two. Yeah, but things had progressed so of, much, hadn't it? A lot of advances. And yeah. you think 12 years before the major, we'd basically gone from standard Fordsons, TE20s, yeah. you know, I mean, a bit, again, a big jump ahead, hadn't they? Yeah. So. As I said, you're looking at the progress of farming. Yeah, I'm on the top of that one as well. Ah, so, right. Now, what we'll do, because people keep asking about it, mm. not today, but we will look at the multi-power system and how it works. Yeah. Because we think we can probably end up splitting this at some point. We will do, yeah. So that'd be a lot easier to explain. Although this isn't multi-power. No. But we can explain where, because everything's there for it to go in, isn't it? Yes. So the, the two choices and the options but we can show casting, so that's right yeah. so we can show you know where a multi-power would be and what it did yeah like you let you go down a hill really fast yeah right well, consequently sorry whatever people say that was not a design flaw it's how they were designed to be and if you know what you're doing there's nothing wrong with nothing it wrong with it at all right trumpet uh, sorry let's get this trumpet off right so we just undone all the bolts around here how many? Uh, all of them. It's been a bit of a pain to split, but we have started at the top there, as you can see. But uh, we've got an old stud, not that one, this one here that's stuck in there. Yep. There we go. Right. 
That's it. There we go. There okay. she blows. Stay right, steady. Right. Now you'll just take it up a bit now. Yeah. And then we can swing it out the way. Right, just move your trumpet. Remember, we're talking about the diff lock went in there, pushes that across. Yeah. So right, yep. Yeah. And that then pushes that little dog clutch into there. And yep. that is what locks your diff. It's not, not actually too bad at all, you know. No, it isn't. It feels all right. I mean, it's there, so we'll replace it. Oh, the teeth on the crown wheel. There's the wear, wear on the teeth. Oh, cool. I'll get some uh, some wear paint and we'll look at the Have pattern. Go, yeah. Okay. But in case anyone's interested in looking at the wear pattern on that. Right, so the big question is... Yeah. Where are these brakes? In there. Ready? Yeah. I think that that shaft is too stuck. Okay. So what we're going to have to do is get this plate off. Yeah. And then lift the selector off with it. Awesome. Right. So these are dry disc brakes. Oh, yeah, they look dry and all. Yeah. Okay. So there's one braking surface there. Right. This is some of the braking material here. Yep. Stay That's the braking. first disc. Right. Which is actually it's a quite a lot of you can use that on your old Ford down there. Yeah. And here's the actuator. Right. Which is oh, I see, yeah, yeah. Which we should be able to lift. Okay. Right, that's a that's just a typical there's five balls in there, and as you pull on that it just calls the balls slide up a ramp and push these apart. I see, yeah. Here's the second disc. And they're not supposed to be stuck like that. Okay. And there's the friction surface, the inner friction surface. Right. Perfect. And this is just shite. All the shite. So you need a, there's a special tool, spring compressor, that you need. Special tool. Special tool. We're not short of those around here, are we? Look at the state of that. Oh, what a day. I know, it's all a bit much, isn't it? So basically, I know it looks like shite, when it is shite. What is it? That is going to be... Do you know what? I, I'm pretty sure that's not just brake material in there. Because where the actuator lever goes, there's a little rubber chappy in there oh, yes. see all that shite that's gone in there yeah this one's seized up and yeah. uh, is not, needs a bit of attention but so that slides that goes through there and uh, has a little semicircular nut on the end yeah. that slides in that thing so when you press on the pedal yeah it pulls that uh yeah it pulls this yeah Right? Yeah. And it pulls through there and onto there. But this is the weak spot. That is just there. Okay. And it, all the old crap. Yeah, all the can crap. Get in there. Never gets washed out because it's no. under the foot plate. And it's just a mess. So then basically all the stuff can get in there. It works its way through there. Yeah. And that can end up in there. Yeah. But that seal there has completely had it. Right. Um, but. This, so that's it. That's the one of these off. Yeah. Other side to do. But the uh, same here we go. Out the diff lock. Right. Just so you know, because a couple of people have asked, we haven't touched, as we agreed, we haven't touched the 175 yet. We get this done. So we might as well do the back end, do the clutch, make sure everything else is right, transmission's all right. Once this is drivable, once this is drivable, then we'll have a look at the 175. But only once this is done. And then when we do the 175, remember, we're going to give you a breakdown, a real life, not one of these, you know, oh, well, I'm just going to throw something at it. And um, I think it might, no. Load up the parts cannon. <laughs> just throw it at it. We're not going to do that. We'll let you know what it costs. And uh, we'll just keep putting it on the board. Because it can be frightening. Yes. So uh, there we are. Right. So on to the next bit.
So there we go, muckers. And um, we'll keep you up to date with how we progress once we get the other new parts uh, in and we'll clean everything down and then we'll start reassembling them. But uh, yeah, hopefully it gave you a bit of an insight as to you know what's actually inside a dry brake system, although they are obviously wet. Now, muckers, um, I mean, quite a few of you contact me especially in the last few weeks, to say that you're not getting notifications of when I'm putting up videos. Old lube tubes up to its normal thing where, you know, they don't push nothing and they're also um, having a reset where, as I said, and that means your notification bell is getting uh, turned off. So you've got to push it back on again, basically reset it. They're all for these, you know, touchy-feely PC channels and whatever. And we don't think we quite fit into that category, but bucket muckers, I ain't changing. So, um, as I said, just make sure the bell's pressed and I'll try and announce on Instagram and Facebook and that when I'm putting a video up. It's all I can do. Now, on last week's video, I asked you uh, just to press the old like button. Not so much anything to be, you know, I like the video. Just showing your support for the channel, muckers. And you did. And, you know, the, the likes are well up there. At the end of the day, look, you know, they, they prefer all that, as I said, the other type of you know, nicey, nicer channels. Well, I don't want to go for all that. I'd prefer to just say it how it is. Eat a bag of shit. You suck. That's pretty much the point, sir. Not much gray area in this one. And, and show you guys how it is. Uh, that's more to, you know, it's what everyday life is really about. So just keep pushing that like button, muggers, and showing your support for the channel. And let's just push this thing forward. We, we don't want their help and support. If we're going to move forward, we'll do it on our own, muggers. Now, in last week's video, Marcus, I asked you what was the worst tractor you've ever driven. And funnily enough, when I'd asked previously what was the best tractor you've ever driven, I got the likes of the older Fords, the Zetas, like the Crystal and things like that. <laughs> And then when last week I asked the question, what's the worst track you've ever driven? The answers came back, the older Fords, things like the Z to Crystal and the Massey 165. So all it does, because there's nothing, both answers are completely, you know, fine and plausible because it just shows that those tractors, as of most tractors, have got haters and supporters. Just don't have personal choice muggers. But that's what's important, and that's what I like to hear. Question time. Now this week's question goes back to last week's video when I was answering questions that you had sent to me. Now another question I was sent quite a lot of is, which is my favorite video that I've done on my own channel? And that is really hard because I've been there right from the start and I've seen the progression. Um, and I like different videos for different things but that's just me so that's this week's question muckers all right through all my videos right back from the start right through to you know this one or whatever what is your favorite video and why put your answers in the old squid pit below in the comments section i'm going to have a look through them and i'm going to choose one that you know i like the sound of all right um, that amuses me or whatever or makes us chuckle me and the old fud weasel will sit down and have a look as well and uh, we'll we'll pick a winner We'll announce that next week and we'll, we'll send you a little, you know, goodie bag or something. So, as I said, on our other channel, we have got, which is Talking Point, we've got a video of a case combine. And with that, we said anyone that has subscribed to both channels, we'll put the names in a drawer and one of you will be picked out. And they will win this lovely model, it is a really nice model, of a case Puma 240 CVX. Now, just have a look here. The winner was Anthony Sambrook. So, Anthony Sambrook, if you get in touch with me, probably on Instagram or uh, you know Facebook Messenger, we'll get it sorted out so we can get this over to you. Ah, so looks like that's that time again. Is that we got to go, have we, madam? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Right then, muckers. Until the next one, do well.